Hello, I'm Ellie for Edu for Java, and this is tutorial number 11, where we're going to try to explain what an object, an instance, and a class is, talking in an object-oriented programming environment. Let's start with an example. Imagine we want to give information about a dog. The name, color, and the weight of a dog. With what we have learned until now, we would define inside a main method a variable name for the name of the dog, Coco, a variable color for the color of the dog, brown for example, and a variable weight with the weight of the dog. With these th three variables, we keep the information of a dog. These variables are known as local variables. Local regarding what? Local regarding the, the method. When we create a variable with the type and the identifier, it gets stick to the, to the method. When the method is executed, instruction by instruction, the variables start to work. We're going to be able to use them in following sentence of this method. When the execution of the method ends, these variables disappear and the method dies. The life of these variables is limited to the execution of the method. Imagine that now we want to keep the information of another dog. We would use something like this. Let's come and copy the method from the page here we are the dog is called Rope it's green, a green dog <laughs> and weighs 50 kilos here we're using the same system of local variables imagine if we have to keep 10 dogs 20 dogs we, ha we will have three variables for each dog. In the case of 10 dogs, 30 variables. And if then we want to add one feature more to each dog, we will have 10 more variables. To solve this problem, long time ago, someone invented a concept which associates data. These three variables could be put together into a group called dog. This data is associated to this data and to this data because there are data of the same dog. The way to do it in object-oriented programming and in Java is to use a class. The dog class in this case. We have the class dog and what we can do here is define the variables stuck to the class. These are not really stuck to the class, they are inside a class. This sentence here is the way we stick a variable to a class, writing static. If you remember, we already saw this in past tutorials. These three variables are not static. I only wrote this sentence so that you could see the difference between the definition of a static and a non-static variable. When we don't write static, in the definition of a variable, we are saying that they are not stuck to the class. To whom are they stuck then? From the class, we can generate objects. The class in itself is a mode from which we can create objects or instance. We can say that an object and an instance is nearly the same thing. Using the class dog, we can create objects. What shape are they going to have? In this case, the objects made from the class dog are going to have associated to them these three variables stuck to the object. Why? Why if it doesn't say static? Let's notice first that it says public here. So that these variables can be get to from outside. Let's see how an object is created. We go first to the program tutorial 
11 where we're going to the class tutorial 11 where we're going to use dog I copy the code from the page Do you remember that we had already seen this word new dog which is to create a new object in this case is to create a dog this sentence new dog is going to create an instance from the class dog this instance is going to contain copies of the variables we had defined in the class dog as we said before, it doesn't say static. The variable stick to the instance or object. When we write new, we're going to keep this object in a variable dog1 of the type dog. This is similar to what we've done until now. We define a variable called dog1, which is dog type. Here we are. Once we have created it, we have also created internal copies of the variables and we can manipulate them. Here we are, dot one dot name. The dot here is the way we have to get to the variables which are stuck to the objects. For example, dot one dot name is the variable name which is inside the object dot one. And here we can keep the name Coco. Here the same with the color. And in dog one dot weight we can keep the weight. For the second dog we can do the same. We copy from the page. And here we are creating a new dog, a new object a new instance and we keep it in this variable dog2 and here we keep all the information that we have of the dog Rope the name, green the color and 50 the weight as you can see here we have two objects each of the objects are kept in a different variable let's show you how this works we're going to copy these two methods so you can see what's happening. Create method. This method here is going to print the objects. We had already seen this type of static method. Do you remember? It is stuck to the class tutorial 11 and will receive a dog as a parameter. Let's copy the code inside. We're going to call it twice. The first time we're going to call it with dog1 and it will print dog1 and the second time with dog2. Okay, so this is the code which is going to print each of the dogs. The code is simple. The first thing it does is receive the dog as a parameter. It creates an empty line and then prints the word name and afterwards the content of the variable name of the dog it receives as a parameter. The same with color and weight. We first get to the object dog and then we get to the variable color a weight or name which are inside the object dog. If we run the program we can see here what happened. First we have the creation of the um, first dog, then the second and then there comes the printing of the first dog. The dog one was received as a parameter and we first have uh, an empty line as this line said, this instruction said. Then the word name 
and then the printing of the name. The first we have first of one is Coco, the second is the color brown, and the third is the weight, which prints 1.5. The second time we call this method, we call it with another variable, dog2. The second object was mapped with this parameter dog, and we start printing again. This dog here, in dog dot name is the second dog. When we get the when we get to the name, we are getting to Rope. When we go to the color is green and to the weight is fifty. We have to notice that there are two different instances. As we can see, this is a very good way of organizing data of an entity which we want to work with and keep them in a class. We are using a class to keep all this data. If we think of the class or the object as an entity, we could associate to it a behavior as well as the data. So we're going to copy this code, paste it here, change private for public and here we what we are doing is giving the dog some kind of intelligence we could make the dog print itself this means that instead of having an independent method here in another class we could associate this method directly to the data dog is like a complex data we could associate to it this method if we link the method to dog we don't need to pass the parameter to the method because it can get to the data through the variables name, color and weight directly from the instance because it's the same context. They're all inside the class dog. Instead here of dog.name, we're going to write this. This is, a, this is a keyword which means this object. When here we are asking for the name, we are asking for the name associated to this. Who is this? This is the instance which is being executed. This name is referring to this name. This will be different for each object. Let's go back to tutorial. 11. Here what we are going to do is call the method from here print console from dog1 and the same for dog2. We're going to comment this code and if we run the code we're going to see we have the same Result. As you can see, we have moved the method associated to the class and we have associated it to the object. Okay, we will continue this example in the next tutorial. Bye!